Thank you for listening to Fate Weaver, written by Elias T. Least. If you enjoy this novel, consider donating one dollar through Cash App to Dollar Elias Least. And now, Fate Weaver. Chapter 30 Limits Cyrus was stunned as concepts that he would not have been able to comprehend just a few months ago went through his mind. He replayed the scene from that night in his memory. You are not yet ready to face the truth, but you will be. He could not forget that voice. He would never forget that dark silhouette, the same one that he viewed in this display. Cyrus's voice cracked as he called for Queen's assistance. Queen, what are the limits of my space and time manipulation powers? How far can I take them? Queen responds, The boundaries of a user's skills are only limited by their ability to learn and adapt their mind and body to improve. We will not know your limits until we get you there. Cyrus liked the way that Queen was getting used to explaining everything to him in a way that she knew he could better grasp. He was beginning to realize that even this was a tactic to expand his mind, using phrases that were almost out of reach and then breaking them down in the next statement. Everything she did was a lesson for him to grow. Will I be able to stop time for people around me while allowing me to move normally? Cyrus asked. Queen responds, To manipulate the flow of time is a moderate skill that I have no doubt you will become quite proficient. It is reliant on the usage of willpower, which you will soon become intimately familiar. Cyrus considered his next question. Will I have the ability to go back in time and save my mother? Maybe even save my village? There was a long pause before Queen responds. You will have the capabilities to perform such a task, but this use of the power has been strictly forbidden within the rules of the system. It is one of the core tenets of protection when dealing with temporal warriors. I realize that you would like more information on this subject, however. There is no possible way for you to currently understand the reasoning behind these laws of procedure. However, if your current plan to improve your intelligence is successful, it would not be difficult to tremendously increase your natural understanding within your given time frame of two weeks. Once you overcome this threshold, you would have the ability to comprehend the ominous possibilities of those actions. Cyrus took a deep breath as he digested this information. He was at a current impasse, and he decided that he was okay with that. I understand, Queen. Let's move on. Are there any other displays that I should be aware of at this point? The customization display faded, and another display appeared before him. This one was a detailed circular topographical map that seemed to be centered on him and showed an aerial display of the wagon convoy that stretched across the plain. Several green blips on the display showed what he innately knew to be friendly caravan workers that were returning from the festivities. There were also two red blips that he could see in the edges of the view. They seemed to be hiding in the tall grasslands. What are these? Cyrus asked. Queen responds. These red indicators represent unknown and unfriendly targets. It should be noted that the range and abilities of the mapping system will increase with your level of operation. I would suggest caution, however. Hunting is a superb way to grind out higher levels as you continue your journeys. Cyrus smiled in satisfaction at this new and very useful ability. An idea suddenly struck him. Queen, bring up the customization display. Instantly his appearance returned and continued its rotation in front of him. He concentrated on the clothes that he wore, mentally activating his minor creation ability. The blue highlights on the black base of his foreboding attire began to shift through the color spectrum. He stopped at a dark, burgundy color that seemed to suit his current mood. It was even more menacing than the blue, and he no longer looked exactly like the memory of the thing that took his mother. Are there any other displays that you can instruct me on? He closed that one down and the normal scene of the empty road laid out before him returned. Queen responds, those are all the currently available displays. Cyrus nodded his head and mentally activated the mapping display. He drew his intimidating crescent knives and stepped off the beaten path and into the tall grasses towards the first red blip. The familiar chime of the quest came through, followed by Queen telling him about the battle quest. He knew without a doubt that he would get his level in by the time he was to begin his study under Miranda. 
He was amazed that his steps made no sounds as he easily traversed the uneven terrain. Another spectacular gift. It had been a good day. As he followed his own future through the tall grass, he rushed at whatever the red dot might be, and was surprised to find a single mink soldier that was standing tall, listening intently to any that may be in the area. Cyrus had no issues dispatching the human-like meerkat or weasel or whatever these were. They were vicious little beasts that he had personally seen rip the throats out of several of his fellow caravan workers. As he moved to farther down the line parallel to the wagon train, he saw more red blips on his map. Many more. He thought that the timing of these creatures had to be purposeful. The daylight was getting close to being gone. Maybe an hour was left. The last attack had come right as the iris of the sun was at its closing. He did not have time to get back to the main festival and warn the others. They had been drinking and enjoying the festivities all day. He knew that it was going to be a slaughter. A chime rang through his mind once again. Greeting, Cyrus. The caravan is about to be destroyed. A primary quest is available. Do you accept the quest? Cyrus began to run as fast as he could directly into the largest concentration of red blips as he smiled and extended his foresight as far as it could go. I accept he said aloud as he became a shadowy red storm of death. Chapter 31 Red Storm of Death For the second time that day, Cyrus followed the time stream and allowed his thoughts to wander. His movements were fluid, and his new boots made him eerily silent. Without the cries of pain and the death throes of each target he would pass, the creatures would not have even known he was there. He did not take the time to fight individual humanoid beast. He simply cut a swath through the largest groups and continued through the tall grass towards the center of the caravan. He could see the creatures grouped together as red blips on his display that sat at the top right of his vision. They were each getting prepared for their group strike that would be underway within the hour. They were all males and seemed to be a massive raiding party that was at least three times the size of the force that hit the caravan earlier in the week. Cyrus cut through them all. He continued to step through his given path as if he had no free will of his own. He ceased looking for his best opening and trusted that the future that he saw would lead him to his goals. It was truly a freeing feeling. He gave up control. He relaxed his own will. He submitted himself to the flow of time. Cyrus silently burst out of the grass and came to a third clearing filled with surprised minx warriors that had only a few seconds to try and grab their weapons before he sliced into their flesh. Each creature that found itself in front of the red-streaked shadow sustained only one swipe before he would move on to the next. The razor-sharp blades of his crescent knives would eviscerate anything they touched, slicing through muscle and bone with no distinction between the two. The minx warriors that survived his onslaught were too surprised and terrified to go after the demon that cut down their ranks. When Cyrus cut down enough of them to continue forward to the next group, the survivors could only star at the wreckage in stunned terror until they would come to the realization they had survived and went to help those of their kind that were able to be helped. There was no warning for the next group that would get caught unaware and the cycle of death would continue once again. Cyrus had stopped dodging the unarmed attacks of these weak enemies. He had realized by the second clearing that their deadly-looking claws were not wielded with enough strength to penetrate his carbon-enforced cloth armor. Their first attack would always be to his stomach, where they were used to easily ripping through the flesh of their victims, the surprise on their weasel-like faces when they were unable to rip through the soft material did not last long. He ran out of the sixth clearing and still, he continued, ready to erupt into the next. He saw his future stop and he came out of the tall grass to see his fellow caravan travelers meandering about, not even slightly aware of the coming attack. He followed through as the future led him and pulled the hood from his face. Many were surprised as he unceremoniously ran into the ongoing celebrations covered in blood and gore. On one of the blades in his hand hung the viscera of his latest opponent. Cyrus yelled in the most commanding voice he could muster, The minx have returned! We are under attack! Eyes widened and people scattered at his words. A bonfire had recently gotten lit in the center of the circle, and the caravan workers had planned to celebrate all night long. 
Some of the more rambunctious warriors seemed excited for a bit of combat before the night began. Many had been inspired to fight after seeing Cyrus win his event earlier in the day, and imagined themselves in the circle beside him. This was a chance for that imagining to become a reality. Weapons were gathered, and Tillon appeared shortly after to lead a group of over twenty men into the grasses where Cyrus had directed them. Others prepared themselves for an onslaught that they expected to come at any moment. Cyrus found Jarl standing beside Miranda in the rotund Lord Marcus. We must get Mistress Miranda to safety. Jarl looked at Miranda with a smile and shook his head at Cyrus. Young Cyrus, I appreciate your protection of Our Lady, but if there is anyone in this caravan that does not need protecting, it is Mistress Miranda. He laughed at the thought. Miranda nodded slightly towards Jarl as he continued. I realize that you are a skilled warrior, one of the finest that I have met, but do you think if she needed actual protecting that she would have allowed it to be a small village boy that she had never met? He laughed once again. We are simply for show, my young friend. I mean that in seriousness I consider you a friend. But Miranda protects the caravan, not the other way around. Cyrus began to put it all together. He had not considered the audacity of the situation. Of course she would not have needed his servitude. He had to admit that it was a humorous situation. She had the smallest guard of all the caravan leaders because she didn't need a guard. She was Mistress Miranda. She could control the air of the world. He went further into that thought and realized that she was probably the only person in the caravan that could kill him. She was truly someone to fear and respect. A chime rang through Cyrus's mind, letting him know that his quest had been completed. He was confused because the attack never came. He was expecting a large battle that would last into the night. He had just finished the thought when Lord Tylan returned with the rest of the men. Queen responds, Congratulations, Cyrus. You will be happy to know that your primary quest has been completed. Experience distributed. You have enough experience to advance one level. Cyrus was indeed happy. He was beyond happy. He thought that he would be grinding out experience for an entire two weeks he had finished in one day. He watched as the men went to return their heavy weapons and get their drinks they had abandoned. Not one of them would make eye contact with him. They were purposefully avoiding Cyrus's gaze. Lord Tylan stepped over to the three chairs under a tarp that had been set up for the caravan leaders. He sat down heavily, as if there were a lot on his mind. He looked directly at Cyrus. I have told the men to spread the word to stand down. There will be no attack this day. Lord Marcus could not take the slow walk to the point of all this. Well, what happened, Lord Tylan? Stop prattling and speak up. Lord Tylan cleared his throat. I do not know who this traveller is that you have in your employment, Mistress Miranda, but he has just single-handedly wiped out an entire army of over a hundred minx warriors. There was nothing left to fight when we went through. Nothing but a nightmarish scene of death and dismemberment. He continued to look at Cyrus, and then realized that he had been staring too long, and averted his own gaze from this monster in the form of a small boy. Miranda looked up Cyrus with an air of intrigue. Well done, Cyrus. We will have to find some way to thank you for your service this day. It is twice that you have defended the caravan with honor, and have asked nothing in return. You should have a rest and a drink. There is no more danger this night. Cyrus returned her look of admiration with a bow and a clinched fist to his heart. I have learned a hard lesson rather recently that it does not suit me to have heavy drink on occasions such as this. I do have a small request before I take my leave. I find that I am exhausted from this day's bloody work. All I would ask is that you relieve me from my duties as your lead guard. I have had other opportunities as soon as my service is with you is concluded. Both Cyrus and Miranda knew that he referred to their agreement to study under her, while she taught him an introduction into what she called the mystic arts. Jarl, on the other hand, was not aware of this agreement, and suddenly became excited that with Cyrus stating he had other business, this would mean that he was sure to win the bet, and the emerald would be his. He began to smile a large and beautiful smile. As always, this was contagious, and seemed to lighten the mood of the entire canopy of the caravan leaders.
Miranda smiled at Cyrus. It would be my pleasure to release you from your duties, and I wish you the very best on this future endeavor of yours. Lord Marcus spoke up at this point. Wait, wait, wait a moment. I have lost my best lead guard to this boy, and am without protection until I can replace him. How about you come to work for me, young Cyrus? I will triple whatever the pay was that Mistress Miranda was offering you. Cyrus laughed. Actually, I was working for her for free, but this new project will take up much of my time. I will have to politely decline your generous offer. He bowed towards Lord Marcus. Cyrus could not tell if the fat man was shaking his head to the negative, or if his shaking blubber simply made it look like that. But Lord Marcus continued, Free? Miranda, you are a shrewd dealer indeed. He laughed. Tell me, will this project have you leaving our caravan? Cyrus replied, No, my lord, I will still be in the caravan. Lord Marcus smiled a blubbery smile. Well then, it is settled. You will simply be gifted the wagon next to mine for your own personal quarters. Consider it as a reward for saving all the trouble of another minx raid. And if there is more trouble, I want you as close to me as possible. Feel free to go in now and relax. Consider it yours if you stay with our travels. Mistress Miranda spoke up at this. I think you should take this offer. In two days' time, when you start your new project, you will need a place for quiet contemplation, and this would work for what you need. The small group was confused and intrigued by her words. It was obvious that the two were sharing some hidden information. With this realization, Jarl's smile quickly faded and was replaced by a look of worry at what he missed. Cyrus accepted the amazing offer, bowed to them all one last time, and made his way to his new luxurious rolling apartment. He would spend the rest of the night advancing his level and experiencing the biggest change in his perspective that he had yet to experience. Chapter 32 The Curse of Knowledge As Cyrus walked into the cabin that was to be his new home for the remainder of the journey, he couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation building inside him. This was the place where he would undergo a transformation that would change the very fabric of his being, and he knew that he needed to be prepared both physically and mentally for what was to come. The room was in a state of disarray, and it was clear that the previous occupant had not been one for cleanliness or organization. But Cyrus was not deterred by the mess. He saw it as an opportunity to make the space his own, to transform it into a place of comfort and solace where he could fully focus on the task at hand. He took a moment to survey the room, taking note of the study table in the corner, the large bed that dominated the space, and the scattered candles that provided a dim illumination. With a sense of purpose, Cyrus set to work, cleaning and organizing the space as best he could with the materials at hand. He lit the candles and arranged them around the room, creating a warm and inviting atmosphere that would be conducive to deep thought and introspection. With a deep breath, Cyrus sat down at the study table, ready to begin the process of transforming his mind and body. He felt a sense of anticipation building inside him, and he knew that he was about to embark on a journey that would change him in ways that he could not yet comprehend. Cyrus called out quietly in the candlelight, Queen, I am ready to level up. Add my point to intelligence and teach me the secrets of the universe. Queen responds, This will be a significant change, Cyrus. You need to be completely aware of the effects this transformation will have on you. Cyrus nodded. I suppose you're going to explain that me understanding the process is a requirement of the process, and I need to have that knowledge to accept the changes that you have to make. Is that about right, Queen? Queen responds, That is correct. It is all part of the process. Cyrus sighed. Okay, then, let's have it. Queen responds. An ability score of 11 is considered slightly above average, while an ability score of 14 is significantly above average, representing a higher level of intelligence than most people possess. For you, an instant increase in intelligence from 11 to 14 will result in a dramatic shift in your understanding of the world around you. You will suddenly be able to grasp concepts and ideas that previously eluded you, making connections between seemingly unrelated pieces of information that you had not been able to see before. With this increase in intelligence, you will be able to process and retain information more effectively, 
allowing you to learn new skills and abilities at a much faster rate. You will be able to analyze and solve problems more efficiently, quickly identifying the root causes of issues, and devise effective solutions. This sudden boost in intelligence will also affect your social interactions, as you will be able to understand the motivations and intentions of those more easily around you and communicate your own ideas and thoughts more effectively. Overall, this increase in intelligence would be a significant boon to you, allowing you to become an even more effective and formidable adventurer. Cyrus allowed all the information to sink in as he sat at the study table. He knew that accepting the changes that were about to happen was crucial for Queen to unlock his full potential. The benefits of a higher intelligence alone were impressive, and he was certain that there would be additional abilities unlocked as well. With the prospect of studying under Miranda, there was no telling where his newfound capabilities would lead him. Cyrus took a deep breath. Queen, fully accept the consequences of this advancement, knowing that the journey ahead will not be easy. But with your guidance, I am ready to embrace the challenges and unlock this potential. Thank you, Queen, he said, his voice filled with determination. Cyrus's mind expanded beyond comprehension as Queen's knowledge flooded his consciousness. He saw the world in a new light, understanding the intricate workings of advanced physics, mechanical engineering and astrophysics. The concepts weren't just dumped into his mind, but he was acutely aware of their existence and the incredible potential that came with them. As each new idea was introduced, Cyrus realized that Queen possessed an unimaginable database of every subject, ready to teach him anything he desired to learn. With the basic concepts now understood, he could only specialize and excel from here. But it wasn't just science that Cyrus now comprehended. He saw the history of his people, the true origins of humans on a distant planet, overrun by an incomprehensible force. He witnessed the survivors taken captive and brought to this very structure, joining millions of other prisoners over time. The weight of the knowledge he had gained was almost too much to bear, but it was just the beginning. Queen was changing him, manipulating his genetic structure slowly to make him more than human. And as his mind expanded, he couldn't help but wonder what other secrets lay hidden in the depths of Queen's vast knowledge. As Cyrus delved deeper into the depths of knowledge that Queen had given him access, he came to understand the mysteries of the star shell. The concept of a sphere that enveloped the white dwarf star had eluded him before, but now he saw the billions of intricately crafted plates that it would take to create such a massive structure. The complexity of it all was mind-boggling, but he felt invigorated by the newfound understanding. And then came the revelation of the nanoparticles, the building blocks of all matter, and the key to unlocking unimaginable power. These tiny particles could be controlled by those who possessed the genetic codes to activate them, and Queen was slowly but surely manipulating Cyrus's own genetic structure to make him something more than human. He felt his body changing on a molecular level, adapting to the new information and becoming something beyond his wildest dreams. As he stood there, Awestruck by the sheer magnitude of it all, he couldn't help but wonder what other secrets Queen had yet to reveal. The possibilities seemed endless, and he felt a surge of excitement coursing through his veins. With every passing moment, he was becoming more than he ever thought possible, and he knew that there was no limit to what he could achieve. As Cyrus delved deeper into the vast sea of knowledge, he felt a strange sensation tugging at the corners of his mind. Suddenly, he was overcome by a terrifying vision, a grotesque creature with multiple eyes, a chitinous exoskeleton, and an otherworldly intelligence that dwarfed his own. It stared at him with an inscrutable gaze, as if sizing him up, and Cyrus felt a primal fear grip his very soul. He tried to move, to escape the creature's grasp, but he was paralyzed with terror, unable to breathe or even think. The creature seemed to be probing his mind, searching for something hidden deep within his subconscious. Its very presence was suffocating, like a heavy weight crushing his chest. Just as suddenly as it had appeared, the creature vanished, leaving Cyrus trembling and drenched in sweat. He couldn't shake the feeling that it had left something behind, 
a lingering shadow that he couldn't quite grasp. The experience had shaken him to the core, but as the fear subsided, he knew that the knowledge he had gained from Queen had transformed him in ways he couldn't even begin to fathom. Almost completely overwhelmed, he collapsed onto the bed, his mind racing with new possibilities and his body desperate for rest. Exhausted, he had no idea how much time had passed, but he fell across the bed and was instantly asleep. All thoughts of dark creatures erased from his mind, leaving not even a shadow of a dream. Thank you for listening to Fate Weaver by Elias T. Least. Feel free to subscribe to the channel for exclusive original works from this author. All donations and proceeds from this work go directly to him. Cash App Dollar Elias Least. Copyright 2023.